Hello and welcome to Destiny Digits. This is the birthday reading for birthday number six. So sixes, you guys are lovers, nurturers, caretakers, protectors. Uh, your birthday number is a sub opportunity. And so this number is what supports you. So numbers are almost like people or personalities. So your life path number is, is, is the main focus um, energetically that you can tap into. Those are the, that number reveals the talents and the skills that you possess. And then the sub opportunity, this number, your birthday number as a six, a lover, a caretaker, a provider. Um, this number talks about the energies that you can step into to support you on your life path. Okay. So <clears throat> bottom of the deck, we have Sky Father, trust in the unknown. And so there obviously is some type of shift that is happening in your life, sixes. Um, there is some change. I don't know. We'll find out, you know, is this something that is just divinely orchestrated or is this something that you are in the driver's seat creating for yourself? But nonetheless, you know, sometimes we get to spaces in life where we can't see what's ahead. We don't know where to go. We're not sure of the time frame. We're not sure of which choice is best. We're really trying to predict the best outcome, um, but we just don't have enough of the information. And so in those spaces, uh, spirit is just saying to please trust in the divine and trust that the divine has a plan that we we will never understand. Um, and so when we realize our knowledge and our skill set has taken us only so far, that's when we must trust, have faith, and say whatever we don't know will come to us in time, right? It'll reveal itself. Um, so yes, that's easier said than done. First card we had was Sage, be devoted and committed. And so, you know, a sage is is a keeper of knowledge and wisdom. You know, this is an energy of someone who has just absorbed life and experiences like a sponge. And they are committed to the work that it takes to learn, to grow, and then to pass on the knowledge that they have. And so spirit is saying, whatever it is that you are applying yourself to energetically, go the, go the, go the distance, right? What you put in is a direct reflection of what you get out, right? So be patient with yourself. This is something that you love. It's something that you're passionate about. So just be devoted to how it makes you feel, right? Commit yourself to that, even when it seems we may not always have what we need to, uh, you know, to really push through projects or experiences. Just commit yourself to the passion and the love that you have. Stay committed. Um, so be an active participant. And to ask a six to be committed and devoted, you know, you guys are stable. You're balanced. Um, and so when you show up to things, you show up in a way that's very responsible. Next, we have Earth Mother. Feel loved and feel comforted. And so, you know, this is that Empress energy uh, that we would see, you know, in tarot. And so this is two things, you know, as we're in these unknown spaces, somehow we need to tap into the sweet spots within ourselves. We have to provide ourselves with the love and the comfort. We have to soften ourselves to this experience, right? When it becomes a little scary or a little shaky, but you also have to become this, you know, whatever this new thing is, whatever this unknown thing is that is being created, you have to act as if you are mothering and nurturing it to life. And so your energy needs to vibrationally be one that matches with how you would grow life, right? You have to create an environment with inside of yourself, within your heart, within your mind, within your soul, within your physical body and how you care for yourself. All of those environments need to be ripe for what is to come, 
right? Uh, whatever you are anticipating, whatever you are desiring, it must feel loved and comforted. And that is what you must give yourself so that you have that energy in your bucket to then project it out when you're manifesting, creating, and growing things. Lastly, we have shapeshifter, transform and unveil your gifts. So trust in the unknown. You know, the fact that we're talking about unveiling gifts, this means that until this point, point in life, they haven't been revealed, maybe not only just to others, but also to self. And so this transformation, you know, I think this is about being in being patient with yourself, uh, being committed to this journey, no matter how tough or challenging it may seem, and really being mothering yourself through this, right? And then whatever you are unveiling, whatever you're birthing, whatever you're transforming into, um, it's going to be a process that you have to be comfortable with. And that's why devotion and commitment is important. Because no matter what what is to come, you just must be prepared to embrace it because it's necessary. The extra card we, we had to come out was Stargazer, set your sights higher. So whatever it is you're looking for, whatever it is you're growing, you know, the gifts that are coming to you are going to help you expand your consciousness and your awareness of who you are and of what you can really have, achieve, and tap into. And so Spirit is just saying, you know, when we look into the sky, there are endless stars, right? It, it just looks like it goes on forever. Um, and so when you think about what you can have and the potential that you can reach, you need to see that there is no ceiling. There is no limit. All can be yours. And so you have to set your sights as if anything is possible. If you can think it, then you can have it. And that's a big deal. When you really think about what it is you desire, the fact that if it just comes into your mind, that means it can be created. I think that's beautiful, but it can also be a little threatening when we may not know our own ability. Alrighty. So we have, I can do less and attract more. So this sage is sitting here with a leaf and it almost looks like a feather pen, maybe possibly a quill of some sort, but they're documenting, they're recording, but they're using something natural. And so, you know, the sage is also minimally dressed. There, nothing is overdone. Uh, the energy of the sage is just natural and fluid. Um, there's no resistance. It's just allowing things to be. And so I feel like spirits thing to you is guess what? You know, we've, at, we've asked you to commit yourself and to, to be devoted to what is to come. But that doesn't mean that there's more work right? We want, you are going to be taking in more information. And so conserve your energy and do less. It's more about you embracing as opposed to you putting things out to get more. This is when you are receiving downloads. Remember, you've gotten to the point where you may not know where to go. So now this is where we trust. And it's literally by taking your hands off and doing less than you ever felt comfortable doing that more is attracted because when you take your hands off, that means you trust that something must come and you are now done. So commit yourself to doing less, um, even if that feels, you know, awkward. We have directing my focus on what's thriving creates more of what I want. And so as you're going through this birthing phase and this, 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 you know, this empress energy of, of creativity and, and projects and ventures and just success in general, focus on only, if possible, what's going right right? Focus on all the things that are going right, all the things that reflect the space that you are getting to. Pay attention to all the signs and symbols and synchronicities and confirmations. Those things are what you need to look for. Imagine this to be like a scavenger hunt, and you know the end of this scavenger hunt, you will get to this new creation of yours, right? Whatever this is, this unknown that's coming to you that you don't know how you're going to get to it, but you know what, what it is that you want. At the end, that's what you're going to find. But 
you want to make sure you're moving in the right direction. And so when spirit is saying to direct your focus on all the things that are thriving, move towards your goal and look for the signs and symbols and make a note, make notes, almost like you're collecting data um, and trying to decode maybe how long it'll take you to get there. But you know you're moving close because of what you are seeing in your surroundings. So focus on what you want. And that'll take you and secure you on the path. We have my greatest spiritual shifts don't come through force. They come through freedom. And so this is beautiful. And we have, you know, a connection here. We have shape shifter, but then we have spiritual shifts. And in order to shape shift, you are spiritually shifting. And so spirit is giving you a clue about how to do this in a way that that will be easier for you. And, and in a way that'll make this, this journey, this process uh, bearable. And so what you should do as you transform, as you, your gifts are unveiling, spiritual gifts are unveiling, right? How can you better help yourself? Not resisting, not controlling, allowing, embracing, anticipating, making room for the newness, right? And when you do less, more comes, right? And it's because you freed yourself from the journey. You don't, you don't know what's supposed to happen when and how. So how can you drive something that you have no idea how to operate, right? So take your hands off and free yourself. Be the sage, absorb, learn, discover, find, take notes, record, document, collect, and 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 ripen your environment for for all that's coming right so it's through freedom not through force that we can really embrace the greatest aspects of this spiritual shift extra card says when i cultivate a spiritual connection i can trust the universe no matter what And so this is about growing. You know, your connection with spirit is not something that just happens. It's not something that only few are gifted with, right? Everybody has this, but it is an intentional act, right? Think about all the things you love to do. Think about all the things you choose to do and plan to do on a daily basis. A part of that plan should be you growing and a connection with spirit. And if you don't know how to do that, Google, how do I connect with spirit? How do I begin to connect with my spirit self, right? When you are secure, when you know that connection is real, it, is, it will never leave you. It will never fail you. It will comfort you. When you know that that connection is just as real as you are, you can trust everything about your experience and what's to come, right? Even the worst day won't be enough to convince you that the best is coming, is not coming. All right, bottom of that deck was, I let an inner sense of quiet multiply each day as I strengthen my faith in the love of the universe. And so that's another message about you really connecting to the universe because it seems in this time, that is one of the main lessons for you in this experience as a six, just as you are a lover of others and a protector of others. You know, um, you have to be that way. You have to nurture the connection with spirit because this point in life things may be unknown things may be confusing right we may be in a planning phase and so because of that we have to rely on something and so it is at this moment that you are being called to connect with spirit have faith have trust allow yourself to grow allow yourself to transform, right? Prepare for this. Prepare for this. Make time each day to, to, to sit silently, right? Be the sage. Be the sage. Sit 
for five minutes. You can increase it by increments of five. Sit for five minutes with a notebook and a pen. Think and write, you know, envision and write. Uh, just practice, but just make room, you know, make room, be intentional about, about it. All right, bottom of the tarot deck, we have the lover six. That's your energy. I'm just going to move these so I can be closer to them. Give me one second. All righty. Okay, now you guys can see them also. Perfect. All right, so... <clears throat> Center of the tarot deck, we have Knight of Pentacles, you know, and this is about taking a journey of prosperity. And those pentacles represent seeds. And this is about taking a journey and planting seeds. Planting seeds because you know that you are traveling somewhere. You know that there's an outcome. You know that you have a vision. You know that you have a goal. And so this is you actively pursuing and participating with the energy that you possess and desire. So this is about prosperity. Uh, this aspect, this Knight of Pentacles is about prosperity. You know, freely pursuing what you believe to be success, to bring you success. You know, nurturing, growing, actively engaging. Um, these Pentacles are, you know, they'll burrow, but then they will require nurturing. And then that's where we get to this Earth Mother energy. Um, anything that we invest ourselves in, anything that we want to grow, we have to love it and comfort it, comfort it as if it's almost a child. It's a baby. It's a new beginning. Now, what's a little confusing here is, you know, you are being called to to move forward, to actually pursue what it is that you want to harvest, but we have the energy of the four of pentacles. And so this is about holding on, you know, not letting go for fear of what? Well, most times we want to keep and hold on to what we have because we're fearful of a time when things may be scarce and we won't have enough, you know, but when we're talking about prosperity, this is when sp uh, spirit is saying uh, to trust in the unknown. You know, and so trust looks like the energy of the Knight of Pentacles, a relaxed journey where you know that you're moving in the direction um, that's intended. It looks like you releasing, you know, it looks like you being open as opposed to closed and clutching onto what was or what your understanding was. And so if you've been in the energy of the Four of Pentacles, that's why Spirit is saying, this is the energy that we need to overcome. And in Instead, let's trust in the unknown. Because we don't know what's coming, we have a tendency to hold on to all the things that we know or feel secure in. Fours are about stability, right? And so we're holding on to what we believe our stability is. And we're not always as comfortable with really nurturing this journey, but we can't be in both places at the same time. So in order to really push us into this, this pursuit of prosperity and abundance, we have the Hierophant card here. And so this is literally a card of spiritual connection, right? I mentioned that I feel like the, the this moment for you is about really solidifying a connection with spirit. And so as you're pursuing prosperity, the key, the link, the missing piece is a solid foundation and a relationship with your spirit self and to what you attach to, what you believe, what you think God or the divine is. Secure that relationship because it is that relationship that is going to help you nurture the gifts that are transforming within you. Right? So this hierophant is looking up, right? Because one, it, the Hierophant has made space to sit silently and alone with no tools. The only tools that this Hierophant needs is awareness, awareness of the divine. And it is in that trust and faith and the awareness of that connection that you can 
you can be on the path. You can keep this, this bridge, this link that connects you to spirit open. And then that is what nourishes and flourishes you in this journey. We are spiritual beings in a physical existence. And so we have to go home spiritually, you know, so that we can better understand our physical home here on earth. So on this journey, be like the Hierophant. Look up. Look up. Focus on what's going right and look up. Signs will be coming to you. Discover them. Find them. Focus on them. Right? Don't focus on what we don't know or don't understand. Always look up when you don't know where to go. So beneath this Knight of Pentacles, you know, this journey that you're taking. So what put you on this journey? An Ace of Pentacle. You know, that's when the divine literally says here. You know, a pentacle, again, is about abundance, prosperity, wealth, finance, um, just fruitful. Some, You know, um, this is energy. And so the divine gives you the Ace of Pentacles. Well, what does that look like in your life? Your Ace of Pentacles which will lead to prosperity as you embark on this night of pentacles and accept this pursuit is shape shifting. Your transformation is your ace of pentacle. That is your gift. And so what does that mean for you? What does that look like? That is your pentacle. So when spirit gives you this ace of pentacle, instead of being in the energy of holding on to what was and being fearful of the unknown, this is when we trust and we have the two of cups here. You know, two is about embracing, balancing, harmonizing, adapting, cooperating. You know, these two hands here are almost like you and your hand and spirit's hand. You know, one hand is yours and the other hand is spirit's and, you know, together, together, um, you know, a reaction is, is able to be created, but you know, cups are emotional. And so when we're talking about loving and comforting, like the earth, you have to love this gift that you discover this transformation. You have to embrace it. You have to love it. You have to become one with it. You need it. You know, this can also be your physical self and your spiritual self in love with the idea of who you are, what you possess and what your mission is. Once you understand your gifts, once you accept and embrace this transformation, and once you allow the universe to show up and to work alongside you, we get to the energy of this three of wands. And it is when you, it is, it is you standing here and saying, what do I want to see come into my life? What is next? What is arriving? Based on what I've done, based on what I know, based on this connection, based on my gifts, based on my transformation, what do I envision my life to look like? And above this three of wands, we have the hierophant. This is where we look up, right? Because this is where we focus on spirit. This is where we focus. Okay, let's think about everything that's going right. What does my pursuit need to look like? So this Knight of Pentacles has received a gift. You take your gift, you allow it to transform you, you begin this pursuit. This pursuit is going to require you to make a plan. You have to engage with the experience. You know, when life comes to us, sometimes we can, you know, we can run, we can freeze, or we can fight. Run, freeze, or fight. And those sometimes are fear-based. And sometimes when you don't understand something, you have a tendency to fear it. But remember, once you trust in the unknown, the divine, your connection, instead of fearing and not feeling like you understand what to do, you can literally sit and plan, what will I do? Where do I want to go? You know, what is this journey that I must now start now that I know it might, you know, now that I know that I'm a sage, are you discovering that you are a sage, right? Be devoted and committed to that. When you make this plan, what does a life look like, feel like, what do people, places, and things need to be in order for you to have the environment that continues you to unfold into this newfound role? 
Now, above the Four of Pentacles, so what we have the Ace of Wands, which is like inspiration, right? This is an idea. This is a spark. This is a fire being, being, you know, awakened within you. And I feel like this fire is, you know, we have the lovers here, six, which is your number, right? And so, you know, the lovers can talk about a relationship, um, but it can also just talk about an energy um, that we, you know, if you want, look at the passion here. If you want this relationship, you have to be that energy in order to have it, right? You have to bring it in. And so this spark, this ace of wands, the divine has given you two aces in this reading. One was a gift about your transformation and the spiritual gifts you have. One is you realize you're a shapeshifter, right? You can go back and forth between the physical and the spirit and you have gifts that you can use on to help you in both. And so now we get the Ace of Wands, which is about love, connection, companionship. Six is you love love. You love relationships. This is what you this is what you live for. You have you have the tools and the talent and all the skills, you know, with your your number energetically to have this, to attract this in life. And so I feel like what's what spirit is giving you is 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 the is the energy of the lovers. I feel like it's it's reawakening you. Um, and I think you are falling in love with self. I think you are falling in love with with all aspects of who you are. I think you I think that if you live in the energy of love, of self, I think that in the event that you wanted to attract a lover, vibrationally, that's exactly what you would do, right? And maybe you want a relationship that's devoted and committed, right? Maybe you want a relationship, you know, maybe this is what you want. Six is you're about love, you know? And the re- you need relationships. You're a protector, right? You you help people. People need you. Let me say it that way. Um, and so nonetheless, there's a quality of relationships that you are going to be able to have based on this newfound understanding of self, right? And the types of connections that you attract, if that is what you are looking for, um, will elevate you know, they, they will be unlike anything you've had before because you are not who you were before. And so when you plan, you have to plan from the perspective of who you are now and who you are shifting into. The Hierophant card, you know, just reminds you that you at any time can walk these stairs and sit in the comfort of the divine, of God. And really strengthen and ask and seek, right? Um, and it is in doing that faithfully, consistently, without doubt and fear, that your plans bring you to the energy of the Nine of Cups. You know, the Nine of Cups is literally about having it all, having so much love and compassion. Like, life is just over... Um, I don't want to say overwhelming, but it's it's abundant. It's just flourishing. And it was literally by you allowing life to come to you through you understanding your gifts that you were you can draw in this version of life, this nine of cups by doing less. And you physically do less because spirit is doing the other half. And that's the connection you have to do. And when spirit says, I can do less and attract more, you're attracting more because you have faith, because you have trust. And so you attract the energy of the nine of cups because you have made this connection to the divine. You are growing it. You are working with it. You are taking notes. You are learning. You are committed to this journey, right? And you understand that your gifts 
need to be moved. This Knight of Pentacles, you can't stay. Now that you know what you know, now you have to go. You have to, you have to move, right? It's time to plant those seeds. It's time to harvest. Others need those gifts. Others need you. And so the journey will begin. The journey will begin. All right, sixes, I'm hoping you were able to use something in the reading. Thank you so much. Take care.